and hold. Okay, uh, so we, we can we can state know? we can state mm -hmm. that we are opposed to cuts in daycare, right? Yeah, we can say that, but because we're still waiting for them to make the announcement, uh, I don't think I had the authority to say anything. <laughs> financially for pe a lot of people to afford daycare. So talking about that, it's, a, it's an application called Care 3 or Care Scholarship. That was something that they put in play in Naples for accession worker for three months. And now it's going to be open again on April. So basically, this is a voucher that the family had to apply. They had to use a child care provider, and the city is going to pay for the expense of child care provider. I can send, I can send you guys more information tomorrow because I just received the email today yeah. uh, with the application for families and also for providers. Also, okay. the city is looking to pay almost two thousand dollar for rent for any daycare center the loss are paid due to COVID nineteen. Okay, so Jane, I mean we're we're on. So we're are we ready now, Marie? Can we start? Wait, I'm, I started the recording. However, I'm trying to pull in other people that you have. Um, uh, you that you want to participate in the discussion. Uh, so. I, have, I want to keep saying to Jane and other people that are not planning community board members that it's helpful if you become formally on the committee by writing to to um, Miss Fuller at the and the applications on the website. Okay, All Jan, you have to yeah. do, yes. Jan, okay. let me just say you have France Francoise is on I the, and uh i don't know who Stu sherman is but in victoria yes yeah. we know so them I, well no but I'm, <laughs> I, i'll i'll pull them into your into your meeting they're all part of my committee yes victoria uh yes. lisa bramante is trying to get on she has, she said she can't she's uh can't hear is she calling on the phone that's the problem uh i just she just texts me i guess she is well that's the problem what should she do? Sign in through her email. I don't know if she let me uh let me try to text her that. I tried it with Mark. Yeah, we try Jane could not get on her email, so yeah. I what is she it kept saying the wrong address? It said that I was registered. Marie? Marie? How how can I turn on my video, Marie? Who is who am I talking to? That's uh, it's Victoria. Hi, Victoria. You, you you have the control there. I do not. Yeah. So Vicky, at the very bottom where all the windows are, there's a little. There's like two, almost a full state. One says mute, and the other one says start video. I had I had to basically uh, become a panelist before I could do that. I I couldn't do that. Oh, I see that. Yeah. I didn't know you existed. You two anymore. Wow, Victoria and Francois. Who? Okay. So I just want. To, can I just say that I'm running between Josephine in the bath and cooking dinner, but I'm listening. We always like to hear those things that you're running between two. So we're all we're doing. Let's we're going to try to move quickly because I was a little shocked, surprised that the meeting was tonight. I thought it was next week, but either way, we're here. And we're just finishing any recommendations, which you should write on your chat for awards that our committee would give to recognize the work that people have done around the coronavirus in Williamsburg Greenpoint. And we have quite a list now. And our course, our, um, so if you can put that there and we don't have to keep saying it, that would be nice. Um, because uh, we think that that's important to recognize. And the second thing we were on is that the uh, budget is coming up at the next meeting. Is that right, Marie? Yes. And we're saying that it's 
we should be looking at and the, the thing that happens is that if we have ideas around daycare and other areas like the park which jane's going to talk about in a minute things that we think should be in the budget for the ways we're green point budget now is the time uh are you hiding from me with the no, 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 I'm okay now. so no no and uh we should just lay out what we think our priority areas that this time we don't want to miss uh and we just said daycare we're hearing rumors but we uh I, iris has brought up the fact but she doesn't have all the facts so we're trying to find out if there really are plans to close down some daycare centers and what's going on so we want to Can I just uh, alert the fact that we are trying to maintain okay. what we have and expand the areas of support to take care for parents that are paying too much money. There's a whole, and I'm not an expert on this, Francoise, was. So, so you with a child or Victoria, if you could give us language, that would help. So I just want to make sure everybody knows that the Greenpoint YMCA Early Education Center um, is officially closed. Josephine was supposed to start in September, um, and we got the notice in early September. Um, I think part of it is funding. Um, one thing that was great about them is that because they did take, they had money coming in from Lentil and from the city also, they were able to do sliding scale. So now the cheapest daycare here, there's one tiny little in-home daycare that's 480 a week. Otherwise, if you need full-time school days, it's $2,500 to $3,000 a month. Um, and so they were also losing $5 million in uh, after-school care funds from Joe Lentil when he leaves office. So I am curious if some of the cuts are because we're losing that $5 million. Okay. And it would be helpful if people, and, and particularly since you've been on early childhood and child care for a while, Francoise, if we can get more of the specific, because we really wanted to have an ongoing working group with the Women's Issues Committee of Young Women with Children, because okay. uh, we, we have some idea of the elderly concerns, and that's another whole bunch, older women and the nursing home issues. We don't, I don't know, for example, how the nursing homes were with all the bad scandals going on in the state, how much that affected the Waynesburg and Bushwick area. You know, we know obviously that the Hasidic neighborhood is hard hit, but not because of nursing homes, because of culture, I'm assuming. Uh, so if you can get more facts of what you think our position should be, that would be helpful on the child care, on the after school. And I think that, that it's worthwhile for us to talk to uh, the assemblyman. He's still in office until the end of December, you know, about what can be done. Uh, and Iris, Iris, can I just, would I be able to just email you? Because I think um, we've talked about it a little bit for, before, but I feel like if you and I could kind of come up with a, kind of plan for the district um, or the concerns. Would you be open to do trying to do that either via Zoom or phone or socially distanced? Sure. Okay. So that would right. be helpful because that's a hole we want to get out of this time around. Um, are there any other issues? Because the point is the city's hard hit with money, right? And we know that often what happens is women step back when it comes to looking at making a claim on the budget. What are we supposed to be watchdogging that makes a big difference to women? That so I forget. I have a big one actually to announce. Um, so surprise. <laughs> <laughs> so Deborah Spiroff and I have been working on a project with Lintel's office, uh, Reynoso's office and uh, a few other people up in Albany uh, to get a public hearing on domestic violence and sexual assault um, levels. And especially during COVID, we know that those levels have increased. 
uh, but there is no uh, public access to the information because it's very sensitive medical uh, information. There's no report that's made public about what the true numbers are across the city. And there's also no protocol, which is what our final goal is, to work towards a universal protocol for domestic violence and sexual assault in all of our hospitals. Um, that's obviously a huge goal, and it's probably going to take, you know, uh, more than a few years to accomplish. But that is the first step of it is to call for a public hearing so that we can have a fact-finding mission. And so we want to. Are you talking about statewide, citywide, both? Local, what? The, the information is going to rest with the state. So we need our state senators and our state assembly members to be on board with this to amplify it as much as possible. Uh, but we also are calling for funding so that we can start a pilot program to uh, to eventually roll out universally across all our public and uh, private hospitals in New York State. Anybody, you've all heard her. So can we have any comments here? Anybody, anybody in disagreement with the direction that we were moving on childcare with Francoise and Inez, and now we're looking at domestic violence with Victoria. Any problem here with the direction we're going? Any comments? No, what can we do to help? She, Victoria, said, what can we do to help? What? I, I just want to say thank you, Victoria, and I'll, and Deborah as well, because this is so important and not being talked about. I just would want to add, um, and I'm sure it's already in your notes, but that domestic violence is also leading to homelessness among women. Um, oh. And oh. yeah, there's a woman on Manhattan Avenue, and that's that's why she's currently homeless. So. If you can also bring that into what your your conversations are, what works. What do you think? Can we, uh, can we ask the uh, housing groups here? I mean, I think that the community board should be. We should go on and ask the local CDCs and all the housing groups to bring forth information about what it's, what they're seeing happening in their. You know, with the homelessness issue, with the violence issue, I mean, they are spread out and they see a lot of the people here. It'd be nice to know what's happening and the police departments, right? So who, who, right now, the biggest issue that we have is actually with the police departments. Um, so the not all victims want to report to the police. It usually takes victims of domestic violence about eight tries before they leave and it, it can take longer than that to file a report with the police. Um, and so the biggest problem is sort of a universal protocol for what happens to victims once they come forward and ask for help. And so the numbers you get from the police department for sexual assaults, rapes, and reports of domestic violence are far lower than what we're seeing in our hospitals. And that's why Deborah and I have been trying to to go on this fact-finding mission um, because it's it's completely incongru incongruent with what we're seeing on the ground. I wonder if um, if the info you're getting from the hospitals because of HIPAA, are you getting stone blocked in any way? Hi, the info? Hello, everyone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's um, a it's a legal issue because they're medical records, so the public doesn't have access to individual medical records. But what we're asking for is a top top level view of, you know, just what are the numbers? You know, what what are hospitals seeing? What are police departments seeing? Um, how can we bring all of this together? Because it it's an issue that's gone, it's been swept under the rug in New York City. Again, like there's no protocol. One person can go to a hospital and receive a rape kit and, you know, follow up therapy and all uh, things like that. Uh, another person will get nothing. And so there's there's literally no universal treatment for what happens to women when they come forward. And it goes the same for if they're looking for a place to stay. Um, we had a situation where we had to send someone up to the Bronx because there was no local resources for us to send them to. And it's extremely difficult to get into a domestic violence shelter. Um, and they're they're kept secret for, you know, for obvious reasons. But um, getting the information out to victims is extremely difficult for that reason. 
but I'm trying to figure out Victoria, because this is always this is a thing that perplexes me as a longtime person involved with that issue here is that we are representing a community board, which is uh, geographically as a geographic district, right? And I think that and most of these issues when it comes to women become statewide or citywide and then nobody owns them. You know, it's like you got this kind of a thing out there. So I'm trying to look at how we can, in the middle of the realities of a state issue or a city issue, we can have this this community at least say what its pro protocols are. Because it would seem to me that that uh, this, first of all, having the 90 and the 92 and whatever the other police department is that's in the in our in our community board is and they're never there at the committee board meetings except when we raised the last time we had everybody there was caused by M Emily's uh, hearing that where so a woman complained. The thing you're raising, Victoria, is one woman made a complaint that the police department didn't treat her properly and the entire squad was over there at the community board meeting. I got calls every day. They were worried that we talked about them, said this, said that. And I'm saying is that they should be there at the community board. There's, we, we don't have good information. So one is we wanna know from the, our police force, what is their protocol and how is that operating? And our Woodhall Hospital, how is that working? Stu, you're over there. But if we can at least say that in this district, you know, they can have their statewide stuff, but we have to have protocols that people understand in the communities where they live and they could be the same. But you understand what I mean? How do we make it more owned locally? Otherwise, people just think, well, there's a thing that's, you know. So one thing actually that we've been calling for, and now that we have a new uh, police captain, it would be really good to highlight this is none of us, and I've been, I've spoken to Deborah about this, I've spoken to all the electeds, none of us has ever met the domestic violence advisor from the 94th precinct. <laughs> because they only work, I guess, nine to five during the weekdays, and they don't come to evening meetings, they are not there in the weekends when most most of these cases come forward and so no one knows who our representative is for uh for the domestic violence unit and that's a really really important person to have at these kinds of meetings so i think it's something our committee should bring up with the precinct and we can bring it up through the whole board because the issue of the police and policing right no matter what your positions are and we know is that people are all trying to reform what policing is, you know, and they're going to do like the fire department when they were all fighting over who got to do what or what, they're all looking for the job. So we have to spell out what the job is that needs to be handled and it may not end up being the police department or it may be. I'm not, I've had many, many good help from the local police, you know, in that case. Yes, go on, Tommy. Yeah, uh, in terms of, my dealings with the community officers, they're, they're often in my, in my building at the meetings that I have um, at Grand Street Campus in the past. And when I attend the monthly 90th precinct meeting, uh, domestic violence um, officers are always there at that meeting and they're always mentioning to me that they're looking for other opportunities. So okay. I just don't think, I, I think that in the past, uh, community board really hasn't invited them or because I, I when i go to community board four um the 83rd is part of their their monthly meetings every every month and that should be the case in cb1 and i don't know if what okay, the difference so, is or what the issue is but they well, uh, i'm sure they're looking for other opportunities to i think that's a very community. important point because this fragmentation and that's true for sue with the health services and woodhall and iris is that what they have their boards the police have their boards and the committee board then we're all fragmented so there has to be at least the women's committee can convene uh these uh, uh people but they should be a part of the community board that's for everything and my great point and the police should be there as well as the health and hospital and the board of ed who's the board of ed is never there either 
And you know that, Tommy, because you had it up that youth. That's why that education and youth committee were very hard to run because they're not there. The people that make decisions are not there. Um, so I think if we can get good recommendations, Tommy, from you over in the chat area about what you're proposing, just type them in. And Victoria, I hear you. We got it. It's all taped anyway. If you can't, we got it. Uh, and we'll put them forth. We want to move with this fragmentation. It's like the air quality. We got too many areas that are fragmented. So any more before we move to uh, the next issue? So we're on just kind of doing it. We're getting ready for a budget meeting. And that means we have to look at where cuts are going to take place and where they're not going to take place. People are going to be making steps in our neighborhood already. Uh, housing, a lot of people have left for Greenpoint. Do we even know how many people the population is of our community anymore? I mean, millions of people have left New York City. And do we have any of those facts? We'll probably know after the census. We may know after the election coming up too, but uh, so people are going to make changes. The point is, I think the clearer we can be about changes, we think should be put into place, the better it'll be because people will definitely make changes. People are also trying to buy our buildings. Um, okay, Maria, anything you want to say about seniors and older women? Well, I feel like there's not been a lot of communication with the seniors. Uh, the senior centers are pretty much closed. Um, when I speak out to, you know, some of the seniors, I, I think Marie can probably speak to this better. Um, but they, you know, there's not that much that there's available. They used to go to the senior center. They used to interact. And right now, there is not much of that going on. Um, yeah. So I feel that there's a lot of, um, I know Marie's been following up by phone with all the seniors, but and John, Roseanne, and John and, and Roseanne, but there's very little uh, interaction or, and the fact is like, uh, I was on the 90th precinct council meeting uh, via Zoom, I guess maybe it was two weeks ago. And I know that there were senior citizens that would attend that meeting in person when it was in person in Lindsay Park, but a lot of them are not uh, technologically capable to get on these meetings and interact with people. And maybe there's a way that we could help with that. So what are we calling for? The centers to be opened at small amounts? I mean, why uh, are they not? Why I don't is know. I mean, you know, I, I, I don't know. The pools are opening. Does that include a public pool? No, I got a call that that does not include the public pool. And why? So we got, so it's the public I, got, pool? I got a call from some of our members yes. um, saying that they heard that the public pools were opening on September 30th. Um, however, they made inquiry as to whether the metropolitan pool was opening. And they were told by the city that the city's parks pools were not opening. That's what they were told when they inquired about the status of. Okay, their, so we need why, right? So we're Stu Sherman is trying to talk, but he okay. is. He, uh, okay. I didn't know Stu was shy. Go on, Stu. No, he's he's in the attendees, so he needs to be put into the participant yeah. panelists. I asked her to do that, Marie Bueno. Can you put Stu in the panelists? If you hit the space bar, you can unmute temporarily, Stu. He has okay. to be running for office to know that, right? And but can we also just acknowledge that we have our our new judge on the phone, our Marie Aragona, uh, winning, and uh, our other big uh, our other big. Hey! Yes. Thank you, but I'm not elected yet. Um, yes, no, getting, but no, nobody's they, running against you. I don't think anybody's running against you, are they? Maria? Uh, I'm the Democratic nominee for civil court judge. So there's Republicans running against you. 
No, there's no Republican. <laughs> so you, and we have to say that that was a pretty, pretty amazing race that made many of us extremely proud. If you talk about a grassroots race, Thank you. that was the grassroots without, you weren't some big outside person coming in with a lot of money. You did it. I mean, Congratulate your brother, your mother, and every other family member. Well, and I think a lot of my friends who she didn't have she didn't have a lot of money, but she has a lot of debt now. Yeah, she has a lot of she's gotta be nice to us. The 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 point is we wanna congratulate also, um and Maria helped with this, but a lot of people that Bella our I don't know if Bella got on tonight. Uh Bella is finally been appointed the first Hasidic woman to the community board. Wow. So that is, and that's because of us, all of you. She it took only a year. Jim, and, yes. she has not been appointed to the board until it officially comes from the borough right. president's office. Right. She is not on the board. But Steve Levin is saying he's she appointed. She is not on the board until we get a list from the borough okay. president who the appointees are. Now you can close your ears for a second. We got that. Until we get it, um, if they try to, that, that would be something. If Steve, Steve Levin even called up with his long hair down his shoulders, saying he's uh, nominated her, and I think a lot of people helped with one lousy woman, and I got a muscle tough. I've never had a muscle tough in my life from uh, Rabbi Niederman, so we'll see. Anyway, the, we want to enjoy some good things, Marie even if they're not all fin finished, where she's been waiting now for a month for a letter from, uh, if you're close to the borough president, Tommy, you, you, I think I remember that you were, we want that letter to come out from Borough Hall that she, that that nomination has gone through because Steve Levin definitely nominated her. And he had an opening. We had one opening on the board. Okay, any other, so we have any other people yeah, Jim, on a, yes. We have, uh, Allison Cordero, she's raising oh. her hand. Oh, good. I see. I can't see any of that. Okay. Uh, so if you just shout that out. So first, Stu, you had your hand up. Oh, yeah. Uh, probably about some earlier point. Um, <laughs> but it was. Oh, good uh, look, <laughs> Um, I had mentioned uh, an earlier discussion in the chat about if you're interested in having the North Brooklyn Coalition Against Family Violence, someone from that organization speaking at a future meeting. I know the director of it. Um, they do a lot of work with Woodhull. Um, so might be able to give some insight into the procedures at Woodhull Hospital. Um, and then there was a question. I'm just going to throw this in the chat as well about the nursing home impacts in the district from COVID. Um, so the state keeps a tally. We have been spared at least our nursing homes mainly i just threw that in if you want to see what those numbers look like yes. um in in um north brooklyn and how has woodhall fared throughout this whole process too uh, um, you're the center you were the epicenter of the whole thing right uh us in elmhurst uh we're pretty hard pretty bad hit so it was here. like us oh i'm i was yeah i was at woodhall um they pulled this uh my legal clinic we went remote uh, late March, early April, just to protect our um, our clients. But um, everyone, yeah, I mean, all the social workers I know uh, there had COVID. Um, pretty much a lot of the staff. It was, uh, yeah, it was pretty intensely intense there. Um, it's sort of returned to normal at this point. Um, at least last I spoke to someone. Um, you know, they're starting to have more regular visits. Um, you know, it wasn't just that they were hit bad by COVID, but people that normally went there for their medical treatment stopped going um, for their own, you know, for their own safety. So people weren't able to get the care they normally got. Um, so it was, yeah, it was pretty intense. Um, we're hoping, basically, everyone's hoping that a second wave doesn't come. Um, but at least they think they have some of the PPE and some of the protections in place um, and the process for discharge to nursing homes has been fixed so it won't you know send someone right into a nursing home and staff in those facilities at least also they're not really up to full protection yet but a little better 
I think so. that would be helpful to know. And if they're making, if they're calling for help, if Woodhall is calling for certain kind of help, that should be in the budget. That's what I mean. Is that different? Obviously, they have their own channels for budget, but we should be advocating. We have people, Tommy and others. Who's who's now on the board of Woodhall? Are you still on, Tommy? I know Angela yeah. Antonia is. But yeah, I don't we, had, we, we had a monthly meeting uh, last night, and like Stu mentioned, uh, they're getting back to uh, pre-COVID in terms of uh, um, the community coming over to the hospital. A lot of the uh, uh, residents are coming over uh, before it was closed down, but now uh, they, they're uh, restoring a lot of that. Um, that's where Jessica Rocho, we recommended, that's right, uh, has been working to with the community throughout this uh, pandemic. Can you get from them what their recommendations are? What do they need over there, so that at least we're standing up for them? Where we're saying that here the hospital is the frontline runner, so we need to support what their needs are in the budget. Even if we don't have all the power in the world, and the more people talking about the same things, that helps. Um, Could I get in, please? Yes, please, Allison, go on. Uh, I can uh, be the executive director can make come to the meeting if you invite her. Okay, good. So we can, and since we're all on uh, WebEx and Zoom, we're pretty safe. Uh, so thank you. Good recommendation. Okay, have we uh, uh, any other issues that people want to bring up about the future now that we might get it? We are headed for maybe a second wave. We hope not. And what are things that we want to make sure are in place this time around? We've heard the fact that there's an awful lot of lonely seniors that are, are kept in their their houses. They are getting calls, which is wonderful that uh, St. Nick's and Lasuris and others are doing telephone banks and calling people, right? I don't know if you're on the calling list, Allison, if you're uh, calling, but what else needs to happen to have us in a better shape this time around and what are we looking for for the future these big pandemics aren't going away so any recommendations we have quite a few from today and, and then we're going to stop here but that i i'm very worried and i'll just say this i'm very worried that um a whole lot of people have plans for our neighborhood and we don't know what they are and that the community board, because it was locked out of uh, functioning up until a, a few weeks ago, um, uh, wasn't doing, wasn't in full force, let's put it that way. We can't, and I'm saying we, if we have community boards, we can't be in that place again. Either we're really a community board and we are protecting the community that we're in, and we have to make sure that next time around, we can't have somebody that says, okay, you have to stay at home and you can't talk to each other because you can't even meet and talk up until this whole WebEx thing came in. And we're still trying to get that right. So there are issues, you know, but other people are still planning a way for our neighborhood. They're not waiting. They're not, they're not sitting there being told they can't do their job. So hearing what people think the cuts are going to mean, who's going to get the cuts, how they're going to get the cuts, and who's going to benefit. You know there's a million financial people that will benefit off of the bad things that happen. So any thoughts you have to be proactive for the future will be helpful. But I want to end. Uh, if anybody has any comments on that, please speak up. And I want to end with Jane on a hopeful good thing. We want to end the meeting on the... Uh, uh, the work that, because uh, this is what we mean by visionaries. It's like the parks people. And by the way, I did walk into Bushwick Inlet the other day and I thought, wow, pretty. <laughs> pretty. Because I've got about two years ago, we would walk over to the park over in the state park and I thought, what a dismal park, you know? Um, but Bushwick in Inlet looks very nice. So, Jane, you want to just say what? 
your planning and what hope you get from our committee will support uh, on women and parks, yeah, well, our favorite sure. topic. Well, first, I, I want to say that I, I do have a friend who has a local what? business who um, uh, has not been able to open for a couple of months. He, he's been ready, but he needs a signature from the community board. And so, he hasn't been able to get it. And his staff is really, he's waiting to get the staff. And this is from the SLA committee? Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, Lisa, they, they is they Lisa on that, the phone, by the way? They would be happy to sign it, but they just- Yes, Jan, I'm here. And it's been a couple of months. Yeah, but let's just say, so Lisa, you're so, on the SLA, right? Not anymore. Tom is. Yeah, but it, is anybody on the SLA committee? I heard Jan. Huh? Excuse me, but this is something that needs to be taken up with the committee. They are yeah, already are aware of it. And I, I'm not going to discuss it any further because it, that's, you know. No, that's why I'm along here at this meeting. If you allow me to chair, that's exactly why I was asking who's okay, on the SLA so they can take issue to the SLA committee. That's what I was doing. Yeah. So there's an issue. Go on. Yeah, no, Jane. I'm sorry. I, I don't mean to bring up something that's the wrong committee. It's just something that I think that people should know. Because yeah. you don't want people talking about the community board in this way. You want them to be able to sign and get the we need we need people to get back to work if it's if, yeah. So. That's, that's issue. Well, I actually saw an article um, in today's um, on today's news, but the owner, the current owner of Kellogg's Diner on Union Avenue is apparently a, a single mom. Her husband bought the diner in 2013, and this is her sole source of income to support her family, her children, and herself. And she was saying that if the governor um, only allows them to operate at 25% capacity, she may be forced to close the diner um, without it being at 50% capacity because of the loss of income. And I'm sure a lot of businesses this, this way, um, I don't know how many women owned businesses um, are, are struggling but I'm sure all businesses are struggling. And, you know, I think, Jane, I think what you're bringing up is a, a really important point that if I the businesses go out, you know, it, all of our community is going to suffer. And when the storefronts are empty, then there's vacant storefronts and the community becomes less safe because there's no one in the storefronts right. for people to feel safe walking. Um, I know that I went to a meeting across from my church, which is on the other side of the BQE on um, Hevermeyer, and one of our friends said that she didn't feel safe walking under the BQE. She walked the whole way there, um, and I gave her a ride back with Mace, uh, you know, an older woman who's not you know, intimidated, lived in the neighborhood the, her whole life, but she, she said, I didn't feel safe to walk at night underneath the BQE, crossing the BQE. Let's put that also, can we just say that, uh, and this goes to you, Marie Bueno, we are asking people to say what they're hearing that is causing a problem. That is the work of our committee. And, and we refer it then back to the committee that it has to be. But this is a very good example where we spend all the time with SLA on the, the liquor licenses we should be spending now the time on what's happening to the small businesses. So I think that if our committee and we are concerned because we're all we're never proactive, we're always responding to the, the people that are wanting to make money for the wrong reasons and not supporting the small businesses for the right reasons. So I uh, if people are in favor of that, I think we need to add that to our general list and to ask the SLA committee to begin the hearings with the local businesses about what they need to have happen in light of the uh, COVID because that's what we're now in. We can't just keep giving liquor licenses when we have all these restaurants closing down and businesses closing down and in trouble. So I'm uh, thank you, uh, Marie and Jane about that. Um, but you wanted to still say about the good news. We no, were still I mean, on good news. <laughs> Good news, yeah, but uh, but I mean it's just that I'm being for. I, I think I've talked to most of you about the park. I'd like to 
I'm hoping and I'm not going to give up. I want a park that's named for a woman in our community. You have to take off your mask. Oh, okay. I just want to keep Jan safe. So uh, I was uh, worried. Okay. All right. Um, no, I feel strongly about it. If we look at the um, New York City parks, nearly all are named after men. And then religious events, historical events, um, you know, flora, fauna, and then eventually we get down to a little sliver of about 7% for women. And that's with all of de Blasio's help in trying to bring more naming things for women. So, um, but uh, part of what I want are these paths that would be in the, in the park with the bricks with the name of historical women and local women that are doing great things, like many of you. And then you press on the app for the, you press on the app and you, read the bio of the woman. And so it would be a way to educate more people that women actually are, have done a lot of great things. And then to take this on the road and have brick paths in Harlem and Kenosha, Wisconsin, wherever we can, to educate more people. The people that, understand that what you're saying and you already have a place that so Yeah, so anyway, right. what, um, we've also identified that there are, you know, while waiting, the getting the park might take quite a while, finding a location and all of that. And part of the park would be addressing the inequity in public art for women, um, programming, things like that. But it would be a great place for all people to celebrate. Them. But um, uh, part of what we've identified is that there are 20, uh, almost 2,500 green streets around New York City. And those might be good places to put, to rename, you know, to name women, to name women. So I'm being encouraged now to start locating some green streets around New York City and um, try to get them named after women. So that's, I guess that's, that's good news. No, but you have a place. So we have a place that we're looking at, right, in yeah, a park yeah. that's under, this is all, I know, Victoria, you're linked in here but and so other people. The green streets there. Right, the green streets. And we can put little paths there right. with more, you know, people can so start researching who they want to. We're having a vision and neighborhoods. They, and the neighborhood women house here that we're in right now, we're looking at re-envisioning it also, so that there's some re-look at what use, you know, as we transition, some of us are aging out and looking at all those wonderful faces uh, <laughs> of the next generation. And what do you all want to see happening? So we're going to be running out of neighborhood women uh, uh, and a visioning uh, process to look at the building and the value of the building and to look at what local women would really like to see here. What does the next generation want to have? What do you all need as you take on and are been carrying now the mantle for quite a while uh, locally? So that will come up and people will reach out to you. And that doesn't mean we don't let you come in, Tommy. Uh, we always want men that are supportive to, to uh, mm -hmm. women doing things. I had a question for you both because I've been trying to advocate for the under the K park, which I think is a really terrible placeholder name for the, the two parks under the new Kostushko bridge. Um, I want one of those parks to be named after sister, sister Frances Cress, who was highly responsible for the clean air and clean water act. She advocated for the cleanup of Newton Creek, which is right there under the, under the Kostushko bridge. And she was a huge environmentalist and really one of the founders of the environmental movement here in Greenpoint. And she died a couple of years ago at the age of like 104 or something like that. Um, so she was a huge, huge advocate and really deserves the recognition. Um, and that bridge uh, or that park under the bridge really has like no name right now. Um, and I'd love to know what the process is for for changing that sort of placeholder name to someone who we can honor and, and respect. I, I, some people actually really think it's a cool name, but I, I think you're right. I love this idea and I'd be happy to, yeah, we can start. Yeah, we, I think we start, a, start the conversation. And Let me ask a question. What park are you referring to that's under the bridge? Because I have no map park there. It's, it's called Under the K Bridge. It's exactly. not a mapped park. The reason why I'm bringing that up if any name changes to any park or public place has a process. So right. the question is, if that's a state facility, it's it's has to take it up with the state 
parks. Okay. Yeah, if I mean, it's a city park and you want to like name a playground or anything, there is a process and it has to go through city council and through the parks department. And you can speak to people to direct you on how to do this. But yeah, as I said, right. whatever's exactly. under the bridge is not a park. Okay, so city Victoria, park. I would just say yeah. that we should meet with the state uh, uh, representative. Yeah. But well, this, first of all, we want to find out if other people on the committee think this is a good idea and you would like to promote that idea or you want to learn more about Sister Crest to see if this is a good name because we just had a park named after somebody that's not from our neighborhood. I know it's transgender and it's in, but not from here, you know, so it does matter. Great, a great person. Yeah. yeah. Um, but but um, I, I yeah, and we we could um, I'm on the board of the North, North Brooklyn Parks Alliance, and we actually made an agreement with the state to kind of take um, governance. So we're in charge of that. So we have to now. convince Jane. So no, well no, um, I'll, I'm actually having um, uh, coffee with our executive director in the next week. So we and could have so, a formal meeting. And, and then Leslie okay. Wright, we could set up a meeting. Le Leslie Wright is the New York City's head of state parks. And I'm sure she would. We know, she right, would, Leslie. She'll love it. She's great. She'll like it. So uh, uh, Victoria does Victoria. that. So you, we want to, we move it ahead in many ways. One is this committee can say, we idea. think this is a great idea. Let's get it to the state, as Marie Bueno says. Uh, we have people here that are working on this already. Uh, any, but do we want to hear more about this uh, woman? I mean, it sounds I'm like I'm going to Google her as soon. As right. After the so let's put it here, Victoria, and bring it up. Uh, let some time go by where everybody can Google and look at it and see what they think. And it's over in the Greenpoint area, so it makes sense. Yeah. That uh, um, as a, on the cruise. as opposed to just Googling, Victoria, are there any good resources you could direct us to, or a bio you could share, um, as opposed to whatever comes up on like a internet search? Yeah, I mean, there are a couple articles about her. I know that she she was an educator um, for about 47 years in Greenpoint. Um, she lives here most of her life. She was um, a, a nun. She was a religious person. Uh, but in her education, she taught um, generations of kids in Greenpoint about the environment, about cleaning up Newton Street, way, by the way. Um, yeah. and was actually very instrumental. She worked with... Um, I believe she started with Carter's administration, then worked with Reagan to um, to institute sort of protocols, which then became the Clean Air and Clean Water Act uh, wow. in order to clean up uh, the creek. And that was done specifically because Newton Creek was her target. So that we can thank the Clean Air and Clean Water Act to her. Um, and she was really one of these forgotten heroes of the environmental movement here in Greenpoint and I think like a winner. It sounds like a winner. I don't think there's big competition to beat her up. But I think that uh you Stu is right that if you have something that's uh, good on her I'll that pass is reliable. And what school was she in? St. Anthony's, Saint 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 Stanislaus which... I think she was Saint at Anthony. Anthony's. Yeah. yeah. Saint Anthony. And what she came name? it's K R E S S, right, Victoria? And the first name is Francis, F-A-R-A-N-C-I-S. Thank you, Maria. Okay, so we are at the bottom of our meeting. Does anybody have, and we are looking at like, uh, we've already agreed that we're trying to put violence against women on the agenda. And we, Tommy, we would need, we would need some help to get the right people and we wanna get this violence advisor um there you know at our next meeting and marie how can we know what our what is available for our next meeting marie bueno are you still there i have to I have check the calendar okay so we all meet we have a community board meeting on the 13th so it wouldn't be till the the end of october anyway but why don't we get a date and then we can look at that meeting uh pulling it together on violence we we are going to get more information from France was and uh, um, who else was going to help us look at the issue of childcare and children, but we are going to uh, look re look at the budget. 
So we have several issues for the budget, but we need more facts. We don't know what, for example, Woodhall <coughs> really needs and wants. And it would be nice to know. We don't know which section of the early childhood and children are really needed. So if we can get any more facts for some of our issues we talked about tonight, for some of you that uh, put them forth, that would be very helpful. And I think that it was a lively and great meeting. I want to thank you all for getting on at short notice. And if there's anybody else that has something they want to say of some events that are coming up besides this awful dreaded election day yeah. on November in November with absentee ballots and that whole thing. Um, oh, I have one. Oh. Oh, <laughs> there, there's not a single human being on this group that's not going to vote. Can so. I, can I, can I can say something? Yeah, please. Uh, we always like to hear I, I want, yeah, I want also, also to keep in mind and remember a group of people that unfortunately are going through a lot and as the undocumented people i've been dealing with a lot of um single mothers that unfortunately don't have any of the resources or, or can't get any of the resources they are available because they don't have the right documentation and and it's it is a lot right now so i have single mother with two children that they lost their job and they don't have how to pay rent, they don't have access to Susan or Medicaid or any other resources, and it's nothing available for them. So I think it's very important that you put that out, Iris, and if you can make, think of a specific recommendation that you can, that you'd like to see. It's the budget, this is the budget is there, you know, and I, who, mean, I don't people, even know more, the more Who's helping? I don't know who's helping locally. It used to be Southside Community Mission. I don't know who is helping. The North Brooklyn Angels um, has their truck uh, Monday through Friday right. in various locations. And some of um, the NYCHA housing uh, tenants associations, presidents, I know specifically Cooper Park and Bushwick Houses, they have been um, working to do food pantries um, and they don't ask for anything as far as I know uh, regarding documentation. So even oh, yeah, just spreading that. Thanks to that, that, thanks to that must have been had a food to put on the table, but unfortunately uh, all the type of resources like uh, to pay the utility, the rent and all that. Yeah. They, they don't have. And it's so, pretty hard. Um, I, I actually wanted to say when you were talking about um, documented single moms, I've been working with a few people who are doing mutual aid and pantries in, in Butch, Bushwick and Ridgewood. I've been working with my cousin who has been doing a lot of pantry work from the beginning of COVID and even before. Um, and so Sonia Velasquez and I are actually pairing up to start a new pantry in Greenpoint. Um, and she has a lot of resources for undocumented people. We're hoping to get Pastor Foster on board so that we can have a sanctuary space where undocumented people will feel safe to go to. Uh, but in any case, we're still looking for a location. So if anyone has any leads for somewhere, it's just dry goods. There's no, there's no refrigeration necessary. Um, but we're looking for a location and, um, you know, this is a huge resource. A lot of people don't think that undocumented people live in Greenpoint, but a lot of them are, Yeah, and they're yeah. very terrified. Yeah. yeah. And, um, so we're, we're hoping to work on that. Um, and I think also in, in Bushwick specifically, I know Latinos Unidos and Don Trinidad has, have been doing really great work with trying to get undocumented people some sort of resources, whether that's rent relief, whether that's food stamps, whether that's, you know, some sort of childcare. Um, there are some loopholes that they can work with undocumented people on. 
Uh, well, I have to oh. say that I am so impressed with the quality of the people we have on this committee. Uh, thank you for all do your you looking for a, uh, oh, I'm, I'm sorry, Victoria, do you looking for a place in Greenpoint or you don't mind to have a place here in Williamsburg or the South Side? South Side would work perfectly too. Absolutely. He also has okay, so I'm gonna ask around. Uh, I'm gonna try to put my persona email in the chat, so I can you can email me and maybe we can try to find a place. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you. And I think the 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 Reform Church in Greenpoint on Thursdays they have their pantry, and that's you you can go there too. It's safe. Yeah. So so I've been speaking to Pastor Foster. It's just a matter of having. Um, having the availability for the space because they already host the pantry. So we're we're in communication about that spot and uh, we're looking at at a couple other spaces. But yeah, that's that's one of the spots we were looking at. Yeah. So I, I also I want to say and I'll, I'll follow up with an email is um, there's a diaper bank at a church um, like an underground diaper bank that's working with little essentials. So that's an option well diapers are expensive you I know don't. i didn't know we had an underground diaper bank <laughs> oh that cute kids <laughs> can i can we add in here by the way yeah uh, victoria francois we have all these people that are make, making still money off of our community like the movies i don't know if they're still doing movies over here actually the movies okay. and all these other groups I mean, that would seem to me that these on these uh, this what Iris is bringing up the people that there is no resources for for the things that aren't food, right? You know, what kind of financing mechanism do we want to work out with these, with these uh, all these groups that are making a million? um and other people and and also calling on our cdc's and others that have quite a bit of money a lot of money well, are they are they taking on any of this work we don't know again that's, I, well, don't know. I, I heard that the movie people want to get back to work and tony Argento is asking for a street culture so he can test because he has so many employees at broadway stages he and John, gina argento yeah is having a press conference they want to well, um, she's on our board they want to have a um a seat closure so they can set up tents for testing employees and tent for feeding employees. And they're having a hard time getting back to work because of that. So they're um, having, a, I think they're they're calling on, um, you know, having a press conference. I'm just saying the neighborhood would be a lot more f for friendly for all these things if we knew that they were also supporting work, some easy. of the issues of the yeah. community. That's my uh, last uh, thing, Victoria. What? I have one last announcement and it's just to save the date. Um, so a lot of um, a lot of people have been trying to find a nice way to say our goodbyes and to honor our assemblymen who were losing this year, who's done yes. a lot of work for the Women's Issues Committee and for women in our neighborhood in general. Um, and so we're looking to host uh, a little get together uh, shortly after the November election. So that will mean either uh, November 12th or November 16th. So either of those two days and we're, we almost have a venue secured. So uh, keep your fingers crossed for us for that. And if you have any pictures or something you'd like to say, something we can put up on a, on a screen, just do like a little slide slideshow or something. Uh, to honor Assemblyman Joe Pantal and all of the work he's done uh, for for all the different communities in our neighborhood. Um, you can send those to me. I'll, I'll put my email in the chat. Um, and if you want to help organize, if you have anything that you'd like to contribute, whether it's your time, your talents, um, we really could use the help. I can say that, uh, and he certainly has been unbelievably helpful to uh, women's work. But the new library is opening up in Greenpoint is my understanding. And I said to Joey, I mean, his whole history of 40 some years, I think it is, is unbelievable the amounts of things that he uh, accomplished. And it would be really good for those of you Greenpointers 
to talk to the library because I said to him the other day, I said, what are you doing? Where's your archives? Where is that all going? Because that gets lost. It can make you go to Albany someplace, but he's our local hero. So having the library for much more, having an area in the library where the history of what's happening or the, at least the materials, because we're not going to go all the way to Brooklyn Heights, but that it's just an idea that he has. There's many things, and some of us are meeting with them to talk about what next, what uh, um, uh, what next, you know, and what there's a lot of things to happen, and we might want to. People might want to have just the appreciations of things that they think that were most important that he accomplished, because a lot of because he was always modest. People always didn't know, unfortunately. The amount of things he did and what he did and how he did it, <laughs> but I think it's great, Victoria. Anybody else in closing? Like the no makeup on Victoria? You gotta. I said everybody has a new look. <laughs> so can I say good night to you all, Allison and Sue and everybody else? And we're looking at near the end of October. We'll pull these notes together and these recommendations. When you get them, please. At least look at them and say, no, that's not accurate. This is accurate. What is the, Jam, what is the date for the next meeting? If you want to said it would be after the 13th. So near the end of October and I asked Marie and you Marie said she had to check when it's available. There's a very a lot of restrictions about when and how we use Webex. So that's it. And so all of you that are not formal members of the committee um can you please fill out the form on the community board application so it goes to yeah. uh miss fuller and she can approve you being here that would be nice and then you would be formally already set up properly in this webex system okay okay i will do Thank you, dear. It's nice to see you all. And it's so great to see you walking around. I run into Allison on the street. There she is after she fell out and hurt herself. I mean, you keep going. Very impressive. Everybody there. This is quite an impressive group. Thanks so much. Bye. Bye. Stay safe, everyone. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Jen.